Hey guys, and welcome to this video on big O notation. So here we want to show that a function f of n, which is equal to n plus 68, is big O of n. All right, so in the blue rectangle here, I have the definition of what it means for a function to be big O of another function that we call g of n. And it states that f of n is big O of a function g of n if that function f of n grows less than or equal to some constant value that we call m times the function g of n for all values of n greater than or equal to some constant value that we call k. And again, this is where m and k are positive constants. So let's get started by first identifying our function f of n and then identifying our function g of n so that we can rewrite this statement and start working the problem. So f of n is equal to n plus 68. And of course I got that from right there. Okay. Now, what about g of n? Well, g of n is equal to n. Where did I get this? I got that from right there. All right. Okay. So now I'm going to rewrite that statement that we need to prove true in order for f of n to be big O of g of n. All right. So we have f of n should be less than or equal to some constant value m times g of n for all values of n greater than or equal to k. Now let's rewrite our equation, but this time instead of f of n, we're going to substitute it for n plus 68. And instead of g of n, we're going to substitute we're going to substitute it in for uh, n, or substitute it out for n. All right, so now we get n plus 68 is less than or equal to m times n for all n greater than or equal to k. So what this means is we need to find values for our constants m and k that would make this statement true, okay? And so what we can do is we can guess values for m and k that would make this statement true. So let's make a guess. I'm just going to guess that uh, m equals one and k equals one. Okay, I'm just guessing that these values will make that statement true. It may or may not. If it doesn't, that does not mean that f of n does not belong to or is not big O of g of n. Okay, so let's rewrite our equation again. All right, so now we get n plus 68 is less than or equal to 1 times n for all values of n greater than or equal to k. And what did we say k was? We said k is 1. All right. So I'm going to rewrite this again just to get rid of the multiplication operation. So we get n plus 68 is less than or equal to n for all values of n greater than or equal to 1. Now what I'm going to do is move our variables to one side or like terms to one side. And I can do that by subtracting n on both sides. Okay. So if I rewrite the equation now, I get... 68 is less than or equal to n minus n for all values 
of n greater than or equal to 1. And then what do we get here? We get 68 is less than or equal to 0 for all values of n greater than or equal to 1. Now wait a minute. 68 is not less than or equal to 0. 68 is greater than 0. So it looks like we can't use the values m equals 1 and k equals 1. That won't work. So let's guess another value. A good rule of thumb is to guess a really high value for m. But this time, I'm just going to guess a value uh, that is, I guess, a really big value is uh, arbitrary. But I'm just going to guess a value that's greater than 68, like 100. So we're going to have a new guess here. So guess that m is equal to 100 and k is equal to 1 still. All right. So now if we rewrite our equation, we get n plus 68 is less than or equal to 100 times n for all values of n greater than or equal to 1. And if I rewrite this again, just to get rid of that multiplication operation, I get n plus 68 is less than or equal to 100 n for all values of n greater than or equal to 1. And then I'm going to move my n to the uh, right side by subtracting both sides by n. So we get 68 is less than or equal to, um, and I'm going to rewrite that, is less than or equal to 100 n minus n for all values of n greater than or equal to 1. And what we get here, we just solve uh, that right side. We get 68 is less than or equal to 99 times n for all values of n greater than or equal to 1. And then I want to get n by itself so I can divide both sides by 99 to do so. And if we re rewrite the equation again, we get 68 divided by 99 is less than or equal to n for all values of n greater than or equal to 1. Okay, so that statement is always true. And you may say, wait, hold on, I don't see it. Well, let me explain. 68, let me go over here, put a little little line here. Okay, so 68 divided by 99 is less than 99 divided by 99, and that's less than or equal to 1. And it's actually equal to 1. So let me put that here, rewrite that a little bit. We get 99 divided by 99 is equal to 1. So if we rewrite this again, of course, this means that 68 divided by 99 is less than 1. What's the maximum value that n can be? Well, the maximum value, we don't know. But what we do know is the minimum value. And we know that because of the for all n greater than or equal to 1. So the minimum value that n can be is 1. All right. So that means that n is just going to keep increasing. And we already know that 1 is greater than 68 divided by 99. So this statement is going to always be true. n can't get any smaller than 1. All right. 
So now what we usually do in the proofs, usually you'll put three dots, which stand for therefore. And we'll say therefore f of n is big O of g of n. And this implies that n plus 68 is big O of n. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is our answer. All right. Well, this whole proof, really. So thank you, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video on Big O. Please leave any questions you have in the comment section. Please leave likes. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more videos on algorithm analysis, Big O, Big Omega, things like that, other computer science topics. And if you found this video helpful, please share it. Maybe others will find it helpful as well. And as always, guys, thank you for watching, and I will see you all in the next video.